depth on what you can actually do with this game. So I'm just kind of here to teach you guys on how to mod it. I'm going to be using Undertale Mod Tool for this tutorial. Another alternative is using the, the source code, which is on GitHub. I might show a picture of it on screen or something. It is 3 a.m. while I'm recording this, so I'm going to sound really tired. So, alright, let's get right into it. Okay, so first, what you want to do, or what I usually like to do, this is not required, but I'm going to do this for the sake of the tutorial. I'm going to copy my my uh, disaster to folder here, just so I can have it as a base here. I'm just going to call it uh, tutorial. Yeah, there you go. So now you should. I think most of you know how to under. I think you should have Undertale Mod Tool installed. But if you don't, I will leave a link to it in the description. I will not be showing you how to install it, but it's relatively simple. So you're going to open up your data.win folder, or file, not folder, my goodness. You're going to open it up here. Just give it a second. Just click OK. You are not able to change any of the code in this. This is mainly just sprites and maps and all that good stuff. All right, so first, I'm going to be teaching you all how to import sprites. So I'm going to be using um, Sprite under, I'm going to use Crane as an example here. So let's put her Sprite up here. There you go. And you're going to click Export All Frames. This is necessary if you want the entire file. And I'm going to move to my... Where is the, my tutorial, new tutorial folder? Here we go. Uh, what I usually like to do in this full in the disaster folder, I like making a new folder called mod assets. This isn't required, but I like doing this just to make sure everything is in one place. And I'm going to paste this in here. I'm gonna click save. Uh, click yes here. Or no, it doesn't really matter, but I usually click yes. Uh, I'm going to boot up my thing here. Just uh, give me a moment. Find it because there we go. There it is. And now I, you do need an image or a sprite editing software. I tend to use a sprite as it's one of the better ones to use. But Paint.net is also a pretty good option. I only use a, a spray. I use a spray mainly because I can see all the frames at once. And uh, yeah, okay. So I'm going to be using a. I'm gonna let's see. I'm just gonna get a random spray. Uh, what do I got lying around? I should have something here. Sure, I'll uh, I'll use this spreadsheet because I just have it laying around. I don't know if I made this, but. Sure, I'll just use this. So I'm going to use Sonic as a template, or just as an example sprite on what you want to do. So I'm going So basically what you want to do is just copy your sprite, paste it in, just like such. And you want to just like put it exactly, you have to put it exactly where the current sprite is, or where her idol is. It's not going to look good. Uh, if you set it in a different spot, it's going to look weird in game, and I don't think people want that. So what I'm going to do now is just copy and paste this for a bit. So just uh, give me a second. I'm not going to go too in-depth on how to... Or actually, wait, fuck, I can't do this. It's like, damn, I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I'm dragging this on longer than it should, but hey, if I ever feel like redoing this recording, then I will when it's like fucking morning, because holy shit, I'm tired. So, just uh, okay, there we go. So, uh, once we got all those, you're going to see that there's more frames of the idle sprite here. These are part of the idle animation. Uh, 
What mainly what I like to do is use like certain sprites. I like to use I like to do a method where I get a sprite and then I kind of just like paste it in for two frames for like two frames of the animation. I'm not really gonna show you how to do that for now. But just for for convenience sake, you uh, just paste in like your idle sprites here. Just make sure it loops well because this does have a loop and you can change the loop parameters. At least I don't know channel mods for loop can in Game Maker, it's pretty easy to do that. Anyway. So there you go. Now that you got your sprites done. Um there you go. So now you're gonna click save. There you go. Now what you want to do is go back to your Undertale Mall tool. You're gonna go back up, and there should be these three dots on the sprites here. These are important. You're gonna click on this, and you're gonna click on import. And so I'm gonna put in my sprite, and it should boot up like this. Uh, now it should like show up for the rest of them. So if I click here, nope, that's part of the idle. If I click here, there you go, it shows up. This only works with the same, like the sprite is the same size as the original. Do not do this with larger sprites as it will make them blurry. Now I'm going to show you how to make them so they're not blurry. So I'm going to be using an example of, oh, we got laying around here, let's see. Oh, uh, right, it's not gonna be big enough. Okay, just skip to the part where I find a fucking sprite sheet to use or something. Let's see. Come on, I gotta have something. Okay, whatever. I'm just gonna use this. Uh, this funny sprite sheet of Zonic.exe as just a thing, I guess. So, what you wanna do is, uh, Put your sprite, uh, just then pretend it's larger. I'm gonna use this sprite because I'm too lazy to find a better one to use. And I'm not gonna change the rest of these because I don't want to, but just change the rest of these if your sprite is larger. I'm gonna click on agree. And basically, what you wanna do, if you have larger sprites, you're gonna click on scripts, resource repackers, and you're gonna click on this thing right here import graphics. Click on this. Right here, and it should lead you to something like this. Just give it a minute. Any moment now. Come on. There we go. This script imports sprites from all subgenres recursively, blah, 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 blah. Uh, click yes. And now you're going to look for the folder on where all of your sprites are. It should be created automatically when you export all the frames. If it's a if it's a one frame sprite. You're gonna to have to make a separate folder for it. So I'm gonna click select folder. Ignore this message. It's just showing up. This is not one, but it is it works fine. Click on it. There you go. Import complete. And now if you see this guy shows up. And if if your case it shouldn't be blurry if the sprite is larger. And there you go. That is how you import sprites. Okay, now character, now health icons. Um, what you want to do for those, if you do want to get custom health, um, change the health icons, you're going to go to search up health in the sprites directory here, and you're going to see all of these. These are the demonized icons where the minion sprites reside. There you go. Hit is the revived icons. So the injured ones. Red ring, self-explanatory, and health is the original one. Okay, importing sounds. This isn't too hard of a task to do. I'm going to quickly teach you how to do it. First, you're gonna want a audio editing tool. Anything I think basically anything works fine. But I like I'm gonna use Audacity, excuse me, for this tutorial. Um, and I'm going 
to get a random file. So I'm gonna get I'm gonna get this one here, story of XLR. Your thing should boot up here. I'm just gonna make a small change to that. And now you're gonna go to your Undertale module and you're gonna go to sounds. Every single sound in the game is gonna pop up here. I'm going to be using Exiler Taunt 1, which is Let's I begin! That's loud as shit. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, so you're gonna copy this name. Copy the sound name, right? You're gonna go to file, export, export as wave as wave or wave or whatever you fucking pronounce, I don't care. You click on here, click on here, and you're gonna export this as the same name as the sound. So Sprite Exiler Taunt 1. Click save and click OK. Wait for it to do its thing and there you go. Now what you want to do is go to scripts and go to import a sound. Click on this. And it should be select a sound file to import. We're gonna go to uh, mod assets, Exiler Taunt 1, and we're gonna click on it. We're gonna click on it. Warning of sound warning exists in the game or will be replaced instead of added. Okay. Sound added successfully. I'm going to tone down this volume so you don't have to get your ears pierced. <laughs> and there you go. There's your sound. Now we're going to click on save. And I did not mean to exit out of that. We're going to click on game data. Yes. Now just wait for it to do its thing. And then boom. There you go. You got your thing. Now here's a little bonus that I'm going to add in. How to change your application name. It's relatively simple, and I'm surprised no one's actually learned how to do this until now, or until recently when I figured it out. Basically what you want to do is just go to strings, and you can click on Disaster 2D Remake. I'm going to do Tutorial Disaster. Boom. And then just say that. There you go. That's how you fucking do it. Wow, I'm so awesome. The only fucking shit. So now, what you want to do is just boot up your game. There you go. Awesome tutorial. Thank you for watching. Comment, like, and subscribe. And uh, maybe I'll make another one of these with more stuff. I don't know. Anyway, bye chat.